like Abraham. Abraham was a friend of God. Abraham obeyed God. Abraham did everything God told him to do. You know, Abraham was going to sacrifice his son Isaac till God told him, stop. He was testing him. You know, he had faith that, hey, God could raise him from the dead. So Abraham had so much faith in God. So do you have faith in God? The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Not live by science, not live by feelings, not, not live by pleasure. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. When you have faith in God, you start to please the Lord. But a lot of you folks don't want to live in faith. You don't want to live in faith because to live in faith, it takes trusting in God. It takes submitting to God, submission, to know, okay, I have to wait on God, to know, okay, I have to trust in God with this. That takes humility, that takes true love, too, to love God. Because if you don't love God, you're not going to trust God. Let's be honest, folks. If you don't care about God, why would you trust God? You know what I'm saying? Why would you trust somebody you don't love? Does, does anybody do that? Does anyone trust people they don't love? I mean, I guess y'all do. I trust politicians, but that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole different story, though. But you should, you should, you should have, you have to love God to trust Him. You have to love God to trust Him. And that's why God commands you to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is the greatest and first commandment to love God. But all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength, folks, you have to love God with everything. Not not half your heart, all your heart. Because if your heart is half Jesus and half strip club, I mean, you're going to be in the strip club saying, Yeah, man, I'm a Christian, bro. I believe in Jesus, man. I just have this little addiction going on. Because your heart doesn't even fully love God. Your heart is half. You're double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So this is why God says you must love him with all your heart. All your heart must be must be submitted to God, because God doesn't want just ten percent of your heart. He doesn't want even eighty percent. He wants all your heart. Because the Bible says in Ephesians, give no place to the devil. Because that little ten percent you haven't gave to God, the devil will take that ten percent and ruin your life. I'm telling you, folks, that little ten percent. You're saying, hey man, I love Jesus with all my heart, man. I just like to smoke weed every now and then. Okay, the devil's gonna use that little ten percent to destroy your life. That's that's how the devil works. The devil. It, it, it's not some punk. The devil's not an idiot. He knows how to destroy you folks. So this is why you must be sold out for Christ. You must be sold out for Jesus. The disciples were sold out. That's why they died for Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They died for him, folks. So, you know, are you willing to lose your life for Christ? Because if you don't live for Christ, why would you die for Christ, right? You know what I'm saying? If you don't live for him, why would you die for him? This is reality. I mean, so you got to understand, what, what, is, what is your life like a vapor? What, what are you willing to sacrifice for in this life? What's more important? Is it, is it Jesus or is it your lifestyle? What's more important? Is it, is it Jesus Christ? Is it the gospel or is it your Instagram? It's a metaphor. Because folks, Jesus no, is coming not, back. Sir, He's coming back for his sheep without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. Jesus Christ is coming back for his people. He's not coming back for everybody. He's coming back for his people who, who did the Father's will. And the rest of you, rest of you folks are going to go through a great tribulation. Because God's going to test everybody's faith. God's going to test everyone's faith on this earth. Everything in his life is a test. God is testing you to see, do you love him or do you love the world? Do you love Jesus or do you love Satan? This, this world is just a test. And a lot of you people, you have an F right now because you're not in the Bible. You're not reading the word of God. You're not seeking God. You don't know God. Jesus says in John 17 that this is eternal life. To know the God and the truth in Jesus Christ who you sent. So this is to have eternal life is to know who God is. This isn't a this is not a guessing game, folks. You don't have to guess, but who is God? Is it Buddha? Is it Zeus? It's not a guessing game. God came down in the flesh and died for your sins. Zeus didn't do that. Allah didn't do that. Buddha didn't do that. Real the real God is not playing around with you, folks. The real God isn't playing peekaboo. He came down in the flesh and he still rejected him. So it's not that you need to see God to believe Him. You need to believe in His Word. That's what it comes down to. Because even Jesus, God in the flesh, came down and they still rejected Him. They didn't believe Him. They can't believe God came down in the flesh. No way, man. No way. Because they don't believe how much God actually loves them. And that's the sad part, that human beings don't believe God actually loves them. That, they, that someone cares for them that much. That the Creator of the universe came down and died for them. That's just mind-blowing to some people. The Jews can even believe. The Jews killed Jesus. Jesus was killed by his own people. That's sad. That's terrible, isn't it? This shows you the hardness, the darkness of humans. The human heart is so wicked. We cannot believe in God. This is why Jesus says, just believe in me, right? Just believe in me. 
But it's so hard for human beings to believe in Jesus. It's hard. He said, hey, just believe, man. Just believe. People are like, I can't believe, man. The Bible's been rewritten, man. It happened 2,000 years ago, man. It, it, it's so simple. God says, just believe in me. Human beings making all these excuses when I can't believe in Jesus and stuff like that. It's terrible, isn't it? The human heart is wicked. And this is why God has to clean out the human heart. Because if your heart is not purified and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you'll be just like the Jews that killed Jesus. The Jews. The, the Jews wanted him crucified. The Gentiles, Pilate didn't even say, hey, this man is innocent. He said, hey, this man is innocent. They're like, nah, kill him, crucify him. Crucify him. That's so sad. Your own people turn against you. Because these people do not want the truth. Even right now, there's so many so-called Christians in the church who say they believe in Jesus. But when they hear the true gospel, they hate it. They hate the true gospel. They hate it. Because they actually don't believe in the truth of, of Jesus Christ. Because there's a reason why they killed Jesus, folks. Jesus Christ wasn't going around saying, hey man, where's my hug at? No, they killed him because he did, he's calling out sin. That's why, folks. You think he was just saying, hey man, I love you. Hey, I love you. Hey, hey, high five, man. That's not why he killed Jesus. They killed Jesus because Jesus was like, hey, you're living in adultery. Jesus called out people living in adultery. And well, they repented, but other people did not call out, people did not like how Jesus called out their sin. And they killed, they want to kill him. So this shows you that God is love. Yes, God is merciful, but God's not going to tolerate sin. God's not going to tolerate sin. I mean, no one, no one kills someone for just saying, hey, man, God loves you, man. God loves you. God loves you. No one's going to kill you for that. But when you start saying, hey, man, God says come out of sin, the demons come out. The demons are coming out of people so because loud. demons love down. sin. Demons, demons want you to live in sin and go to hell with them. So Jesus is a holy God. Jesus is holy. God is holy. He's the holy one. And God's holiness, the Bible says, without holiness, no man will see God. You will not even see God if you don't live a holy lifestyle. You'd you be rejected from his presence because God is... God, God is majesty. God cannot be in the presence of sin. He cannot be in the presence of evil. That's why when Adam and Eve sinned, he said, get out. He, they, they did one sin. God said, literally, get out. That's how perfect and pure God is. Imagine how much sin we live in, folks. This is why we need Jesus. Without Jesus, do we have no hope to go to heaven. We don't, we don't deserve heaven. It's a gift from us. God has given us as a gift. We don't deserve heaven. He just loves us enough to give us a gift to go to heaven and that's very beautiful that God loves you so much that God will send his son Christ to die on the, to die on the cross for your sins for you to have eternal life so your creator is, is very loving but he doesn't love your sin though you know God doesn't love evil the Bible says God hates evil he hates pride he hates, he hates arrogance because God is so loving he hates everything that's not loving God is so loving he hates everything that's not of love and he has a, he has a hate towards it folks I mean he hates it he's not just Kind of, kind of doesn't like it. He hates it. God hates liars. God, God hates all this stuff because it goes against His original intent for the world. It goes against God's original intent for creation. Creation was not made to be broken and you know depressed and suicide. This is not God's plan. This is the devil's plan. But God did not make you to walk around in anxiety. Where did this stuff come from? It did not come from God. It came from sin. It came from Satan, and it comes from mankind. Because the Bible says. God did not create death. You know, death came into the world because of us. We came, we make death into this world, folks. God did not give us death. God gave us life. God said, be fruitful, be multiplied. And we said, ah, oh, forget that. I'm going to do my own thing. And now we all die. Because we're because really against the word of God. And God in his mercy, only he could save us from, the, from, the, from our own destruction. Only God can save us from our own destruction. And this is how merciful and loving your creator is. That God has to fix a problem that we can't even we can't even fix ourselves we can't we can't fix this problem of sin in our lives we can't do it we can't change ourselves you know what i'm saying we can't change ourselves this is why only jesus can change you only god can change you he can clean you up because you can't clean you can't clean yourself up because you, you put yourself in more problems this is what the bible says trust in the lord with all your heart trust in the lord with all your heart he didn't say trust in yourself he didn't say trust in presidents he didn't say trust in the government he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He shall direct your paths. So that's in Proverbs 3. So the God is telling you, hey, trust in me. Don't trust in the world. Don't trust yourself. Don't trust the government. Trust in me. And when you trust in God, life, life, is in, life, life is in abundance. Life is peaceful. 
Life is, you're in safety. You're in good standing with God when you start to trust in the Lord. But mankind, the devil tells you, hey, do, do your own thing, man. You don't need God no more. We have technology. Trust in yourself, bro. Trust in yourself. That's terrible advice. That's dangerous. Because when people start trusting in yourself, they start doing their own thing. People justify their evilness. People justify why they have to kill, why they have to murder, why they have to cheat on their wives, and things like that. Oh, I just had to do it, man. He, he, looked, he looked at me wrong, man. He said, F me, man, so I just had to punch him in the face. This is how human beings reason with themselves. They're like, hey, I, I had to do evil because he does he does evil to me. That's human beings. That's how, that's how we reason with ourselves. And God says, no, this, this is not how we're going to handle this. God says, forgive him and love him. God says, I'll handle it. God says, I'll handle it. But folks are like, no, 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 I want to do it myself. And it, it causes a cycle of chaos. It causes a cycle of evilness in the world. Of people with vengeance, murder. You know, that's why you got gangs, folks. Because why do we have gangs? For what? Why do we even have gangs? What, what's the point of a gang? It's, it's, just, it's pointless. It's vanity. It's wickedness, folks. Praise the Lord. Thank you. It's wickedness, folks. Sin is sin. sin. There's no common sense in sin. There's no reason to ever live in sin. There's never a reason to sin. There's not a reason to lie. There's not a reason to murder. There's never a reason to live in sin. I don't care what the reason is. Because you can't justify why you have to sin. You know, why do you have to punch that person in the face? Why do you have to do that? Because just because you're mad, that's not a good reason. That's why we have laws. We have laws for a reason. And the law of God is above the law of men. And Jesus says, if you have hate in your heart, it's, uh, it's murder in the eyes of God. So God's commandments are, are above us. God says hate in your heart is murder. Because guess what? Murder comes from the heart. Before you do something in the physical, it has to come from, it has to come from your heart. This is why God wants your heart to, to, to be submitted to Him. Because if your heart is full of hate, you're going you're gonna to be dangerous. You're going to be a dangerous person if your heart is full of hate, racism, anger, wrath. It doesn't matter. If your heart is full of pain and wrath and anger, you, you're going to be a hothead. I mean, you're going to be a hothead person out here with road rage and Las Vegas Strip and all these other people out here. Because their heart doesn't have any peace and, and joy and love inside it. So it comes down to what, what's inside your heart. What's inside your heart? At the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A lot of people say, hey man, you don't know me, bro, you don't know me. Well, I can, I can know you by what comes, out, what, what comes out your mouth, what's inside your heart. The Bible says the fool trusts in your heart. So you, should, you shouldn't trust in your heart. You should trust in God. You should trust in the Word of God. Trust in the Lord. And David, the psalmist, he said, create me a clean heart, O Lord. Even David had to ask God to put in me a clean heart. Because people, we're in the battle. There's a battle in, our, in the inside. There's so many men members inside you warring. There's things, in the, there's things inside your body. Your flesh wants to go against God because you're fallen. This is a fallen nature. Your flesh is fallen. Your flesh is corrupted. So there's a fight every day to deny your flesh. And the devil wants to entice your flesh every single day with naked girls, naked guys, and sex, and drugs, and weed, and murder, and chaos. This makes the flesh happy. This actually makes your, it makes your flesh happy. But it makes your soul miserable, though. So on the outside, you feel good for a little, a little bit of pleasure. But you feel guilty on the inside. You see what I'm saying? So this is why God says you must deny yourself, deny your flesh, and pick up your cross and follow Him. And you have joy in the inside. But the devil is deceiving you folks and thinking, Hey, man, the best thing I get is living in sin. With my flesh. And you cannot live in your flesh. You cannot live for your emotions. You must put all this stuff in the back seat. And, and follow Christ. Jesus Christ said follow Him. He didn't say follow your sexual desires. He, he said follow Him. He didn't say follow your emotions either because your emotions can be manipulated. Your emotions can be deceived, folks. The, the media plays, plays with your emotions all the time. I see it all the time. People are, so people are too emotional and fake stuff. You're too emotional because you don't know how to control your emotions because you don't know Christ. You don't know God. And this is the problem with this world. People are too quick to just jump into things. You have to think, folks, have wisdom. The Bible says that wisdom, wisdom is a principal saying. You need the wisdom of God. The Bible says to be slow to speak and quick to hear. People are so quick to say something, they're not quick, they're not quick to hear. Listen to what God is saying. Patience. Patience is virtue. Patience, folks, patience is good. But without God, you won't have patience like these people out here in this car. People, people don't have any patience out here. This is what's wrong with this world. People, people want everything fast. Fast money, fast girls, fast sex. 
we want everything fast, but we, no one's really patient to wait on the Lord. You know, all this stuff, all this, all this easy stuff is bad because it treats you, it, it, it makes you feel like you need everything right now. Because what is all this fast sex and fast money and stuff? What is it? Really, what does it train you? It makes you entitled. It makes you have no discipline. It, it, it makes you. It makes you um, lazy. Because God says, hey, wait for me. I'll give you a wife. I'll give you a husband. But the devil says, hey, look at all this free sex right here. Look at all these. Look at all this pornography right here. Right, right at your fingertips. You see how the devil says everything opposite of God. Because God wants you to wait on his timing. God wants you to wait on his timing to be patient and to trust in him. Trust in his plan. But the devil says, hey, man, forget all that, bro. Look at all this sex on Bumble, on Tinder. All this sex you want, man. Forget about what God is saying. That stuff is lame. That's old school. But is it, is it working out for this generation? Is it really working out? All this free sex, all this fast sex is not working out at all. So many women are bitter. So many guys are bitter towards women and heartbreak and baby mama drama because you listen to the devil. God's plan is always better than your own plan. I promise you. The way God set up the universe is for a reason. God set this up for a reason. Because it works, folks. God, God's word works. But your own plan doesn't work. Doing things your own way ruins stuff. You're ruining yourself. And you're hurting other people in the process. Because you just want a quick fix. You want you want quick sex. But you don't know it's going to cost you so much in the end. It's cost you a piece of your soul. Your sanity. Your mind. All this stuff you're giving up. You're giving up so much of yourself for a little bit of pleasure and it's not it's not going to be worth it in the end so listen to what god is saying listen to what the word of god is saying to you believe in the lord it's not believing in the lies of society society is lying to you people i promise you most of society doesn't have your best interest in heart especially not las vegas las vegas is not going to tell you anything good for your soul i promise you it's not so why do we put so much effort and money into things that harm us why, folks? Why, why do you put so much effort into things that destroy us and drugs and stuff? Because I mean, we we buy the drugs. Without us, there'd be no drugs, right? You know, why do you put so so much money into things that destroy us? Because we reject God. We reject God, and God commandments are not grievous. God's not telling us to do something that's just very hard. God's not telling us to jump to the moon. God's just just telling us to love Him and love ourselves, love our neighbors, keep His commandments. It's not hard to obey God. It's hard to obey God if you hate God. I mean, if you hate God, yeah, it's very hard. But if you love the Lord, it's easy. It's easy to, to obey God when you love Him. When you understand. When you want Him. When you want to change life. This stuff makes sense. But what sense does it make to live for God if you don't love Him? And that's why people don't love. That's why people don't live for God because they don't love Him. Because without love, people. Without love, there's no point to do anything. Because God doesn't want robots in heaven. This is why God gives you free will. This is why God gives you a choice to choose Him or not. Because you're not a robot. You know, you're not AI. You have your own, you have your own emotions, you have your own intellect. And God doesn't want robots in heaven. God wants real love. People who actually love Him in heaven. That's what makes love amazing. That someone freely chose you to love you. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if you force your wife to marry you. She doesn't even love you. That'd be terrible. That'd be absolutely terrible. So even God wants real love too. He doesn't want your fake love. He doesn't want. He doesn't want to force you to love Him. He wants you to pick Him freely. God already loves you. Quick question is, do you love God? That's the real question. God already loves you. That's evident. He died for you. Do you love God? That's the real question. Do you love God? Do you love who God is? God's true character, not this fake American Jesus character, but the but the real Jesus, the real God. Because you have to read the Bible to know who God's character is. You know, God's expressed himself in the word of God. You know, God loves, God hates, God likes things, God doesn't like things. Do you accept God for who he is? Do you accept God for who God is? Or do we make up our own God, our own imagination? A lot of people, you say things like, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in the Bible. What does that even mean? Like, what, what, that doesn't even make sense. But people say this stuff because they have their own God and their own imagination. They have a fake Jesus that says, hey, man, Jesus loves you, man, so I can get drunk and sleep with prostitutes. Hey, that, that, that's the fake Jesus in people's heads. That's why people say, I believe in Jesus, 
So I don't believe in the Bible, man. Yeah, because because you don't really want the real Jesus. You want this fake Jesus inside your mind that says, "Hey, man, God loves you so much, you can just live in sin and go to heaven." That's that's the Jesus most Americans believe in. That that's reality. That's why I see so many Christians going to clubs, folks. I'm, I'm telling you, I go to Fremont Street. I see so many Christians in the clubs with the Satanists, with the atheists. You know what I'm saying? With with with, with the witches and warlocks. You have Christians right in the line with them saying, oh yeah, man, I love Jesus. Amen, bro. It's like, why you out here, man? Why you out here living in sin? It's, it's sad. It's, it's totally sad. So we need to know who the true Jesus Christ is. The Jesus Christ who called out sin. And that's why they killed him on the cross because he actually called out people's sin. And that's why they killed him. That's the real Jesus that people don't want to serve. Because that Jesus, it, it, it costs something. Jesus says it's going to count the cost, right? Count the cost to follow Jesus. Count the cost to follow Jesus. You know, you're not going to be cool. You know, you're not going to be popular. It's not going to happen. But is it, is it worth it to follow Jesus? There's a reason why Jesus only had 12 disciples. You know, Jesus Jesus fed thousands of people. But why didn't they stay? You know what I'm saying? Why didn't they stay with Jesus? Jesus fed thousands of people, but only had 12 disciples. That, so, that shows you people come for the wrong reasons. But that 12, were well, really 11, because Judas betrayed God. But that, those 11 people actually wanted Jesus. They really wanted Jesus for who Jesus was. You know, some people just came for the food. When Jesus multiplied the fish and the, and the bread, they all want to follow Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They want to follow Jesus because he multiplied the fish. But when Jesus started preaching the hard things of the gospel, they didn't want to follow Jesus no more. And that's sad. Because many Christians, you know what I'm saying, you say you want to follow Jesus, but when, but when things get hard, you, you, you turn your back on God. You become a Judas. You become a Judas. You, you you turn your back on God. When the whole world says, hey man, homosexuality is okay. What do you believe in? You start you start believing in it, you turn your back on Jesus, man. Because it got too hard for you. The pressure, the pressure of life got too hard for you. And you turn your back on God. That's sad. Don't be a Judas, folks. Don't be a Judas. You know what I'm saying? Don't 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 be a Judas. Don't turn your back on Jesus because the world wants to put pressure on you. The world wants to put all this, what's it called, peer pressure? All this peer pressure on you. The world wants to act like you're stupid for believing in God. You know, these, these people don't believe in anything, but they think, oh, you're dumb for believing in God. These people don't know if they're a female or a male, but they want to clown you like you believe in Jesus, so that means you're, you're an idiot. And some of you folks, you can't stand that pressure. You give in to it. You just give in to it because you're spiritually weak. This is why you need to get in the Bible. Get in the Bible to get your, to get your spiritual muscles up. Because if you do not have God in your life, you cannot, you cannot withstand the insults of the world. See, the Bible says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So a lot of you folks, you, have, you, you, fear, you fear what man says and not what God says. You care too much about what the world says and not what God says. And that's why many people, so-called Christians, are compromising their faith. They're like, hey man, I can't judge man. Only God can judge. I can't say anything. Because, because you're compromising the faith. The world is putting all this fear inside you. But as a child of God, you should not fear. As a child of God, you should only fear God. And when you only fear God, you, know, you won't have the fear of man. You won't care what people think. You don't care what people say. You know, it's real freedom fearing God. But when you start fearing man, you care what everyone says about you. You know what I'm saying? Every, every little comment, every little thing someone comments about you, you care way too much. You care about pleasing people. You care about how you look in front of people. It's like you care too much about people's opinions and not what God says. God says, hey, you're enough. I love you. The world says, oh, you're not pretty enough. Oh, your butt isn't big enough. Oh, your lips don't look good enough. And you start having this whole lifestyle trying to look like something you're not because you don't care about God. You don't care what God says. You care more about looking good for the world except for getting your soul right with Jesus. So you have all these insecure people out here trying to look good to impress other people who don't care about them. And that's that's reality. That's the world we live in. People want to look good for social media while their insides are, are nasty. People look good on the outside, right? Muscles and, and tattoos and stuff. But their insides are disgusting. There's not, nothing good about tattoos. Tattoos are a sin. The point is the world wants you to focus on the flesh. The world wants you to focus on your flesh, you know, how big your muscles are, how how your body looks, your curves and stuff. 
you know, how many tattoos you got, how, what type of Gucci shoes you got, all this stuff is, is fleshly, it's carnal, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's not anything good that comes down to it, people don't care about character, people don't care about morality anymore, it's all about, hey man, if you look good on the outside, I'm going to follow you bro, or hey man, if you have a lot of money, you must be somebody important in life, that, that's how we, ju we judge each other based off bad standards. We judge each other based off bad things, and, and this is why God isn't like that. See, God says God has no respect to persons. You know, God looks at the heart. God looks at the, the inner and at the outer appearance. So you might look good on the outside, but if your inside is wicked, you know, God's going to throw you to hell. It doesn't matter how pretty you are. It doesn't matter how big you are. God doesn't care about all that. God cares about the heart. There's a reason why Jesus Christ came down poor. You know, Christ was poor. He was born in a major. He wasn't born in some mansion. He was born in a major to, to show us a lesson about what really, really matters. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your background is. It matters is if you live for God or not. Are you righteous or not? It doesn't matter where your environment is. God can redeem you for any bad environment. It doesn't matter if you're a game banger or a prostitute. God can make you a child of God. That's God's job to, to change you. It's not your job to change yourself. It's your job to submit to God and let God change you. God does the work. God will change you himself, but you have to let God do the process. You have to follow Christ and let God work on you. But a lot of people, you judge people by the outward appearance. You judge people based off their status and titles and things like that. He's a doctor or he's a celebrity or he's this and that. You judge people based off outward things that have no purpose, have no value. But the people of God who are, who are humble, you despise them. And this is what's wrong with mankind. This is bad judgment. The Bible says bad company corrupts good um, good character. So people, a lot of you folks, you, you, you idolize bad company. And that's why your character is terrible. You don't, you don't have any good morals. You think these people in Hollywood are someone to look up to because they're famous and have money. But these are terrible role models. These people have broken relationships. These, these people... You've done despicable things to get to the top. And you folks think it's okay because, hey, man, they got money. Who cares? The Bible says money does not deliver you in that day. Only righteousness saves from death. Money cannot save you on that day, people, when you stand before God. You cannot pay God to go to heaven. You cannot buy a ticket to heaven. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. He's the only way to heaven. His blood, His sacrifice, He's the only way to the Father. You cannot buy God. God has, the Bible says in Haggai 2a, all the gold and silver is his. God owns all the money anyways. God doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your money, bro. He needs your obedience, though. He, de he needs your obedience. He needs you to obey him. That's what God needs. God has all the money in the world. He doesn't need your money. He needs you to obey him. He needs you to trust in him and have faith in him. It sounds easy, but as we see right now, it's, it's apparently it's not for some people. So, I mean, it's, God says very simple, hey, believe in my son. You have eternal life. People don't want to believe because to believe in God, it takes submission. It takes acknowledging, okay, okay, God, you're right. I'm a sinner. Okay, God, you know, I need, I need, I need a sacrifice. I need a savior. Believing in God takes a lot of humility. It takes saying, okay, God, you know, you're right. I need you. But people don't want to believe in God because they don't want to acknowledge that they need to change. Because believing in Jesus requires change of lifestyle. People don't want that. People don't want to give up their sex life and drugs and pornography and gang banging. They're like, nah, man, I can't believe in Jesus, man. It's too much. It's sad. People can't give up their, their lifestyle of destruction for a lifestyle of peace. God's offering you eternal peace, eternal love, eternal joy. And people say, nah, I want to stay in the chaos. I want to stay getting my heart broken. I, I want to stay getting shot at on the block. I want to stay in this stuff. And it's like, for what? Well, why, why do you want to stay in this life? For what? What do you get out of it? It doesn't make sense, folks. It doesn't make sense to reject Jesus Christ. It doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, all of us have to stand before God and give an account of why we, why we rejected Jesus. Because to, to reject Jesus because of, you know, what TikTok fame is not going to make sense. Rejecting Jesus Christ over what, you know, a football team, well, it's not, it's not going to make any sense when you stand before God. When you stand before God, God says, what do you do with your life I gave you? I gave you 80 years, I gave you 50 years, what did you do with your life? And, what you're gonna, and God gives you a review. All you do with your life is get drunk. Watch sports, watch pornography, argue with your spouse, cuss out your kids and stuff, cause drunk fights and all this stuff. And God said, okay, why didn't you come to me when you had the chance? 
He could have forgiven you for all this stuff you did, but you were so prideful in your heart, you're like, I don't need God. So, folks, people in hell know why they're in hell. No one's in hell by accident. No one's in hell by some accident. No, people are in hell because they deserve to be in hell. And all of us deserve to be in hell. But this is why we got to repent and change our life and commit to righteousness. Because when we repent from our sins, God forgives us for all our sins. He does not remember our sins. The world might remember your sins, but God is more forgiving than the world. The world says, hey, you can't change, man. You're born like this. You can't change. God says, no, I can change you. I can change you. But the world doesn't think anyone can change. The world says, no, nah, man, you can't change. You're born this way. I know who you are, man. I know your dad. I know your mother. I mean, the world is very wicked, man. The world has no faith in anything. But God says, look, I can change you. I can do a new work in you. The Bible says old things are passed away. You're a new creature in Jesus Christ. So there's so much hope in Jesus. And the world doesn't believe in it. The world doesn't believe I can change. The world doesn't believe, hey, I can stop drinking. Yeah, bro, you can stop by the power of God. You can stop watching pornography. Some people really can't believe. You, you, people can't believe that they can change. I, used pre I was preaching one time. I told people, hey, I don't watch pornography. And these guys were shocked. They're like, man, you don't watch porn, bro? You don't masturbate? Really? Like, what do you do all day? I mean, I, I live my life, bro. I got to go to work. <laughs> I read my Bible. Like, I work out. Like, yeah, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a pervert you know, to live life, you know? I promise you, you don't. But the world doesn't believe it. The world says, no, this is normal. You have to be this way. You have to sit around with 20 girls a day. You have to watch pornography. You have to get drunk. You have to go to clubs. The world looks at you weird when you don't do it. The world says, hey, man, you don't live this lifestyle. There's something wrong with you, man. You're, the world says you're brainwashed for not playing with yourself. I mean, it's crazy. It's like, no, nah, man, I just respect, I respect myself. I chill, I'm chilling, you know what I'm saying, working out, serving Jesus. People look at you weird. I'm like, bro, you're the weird one. You're the one who plays with yourself every night. I'm not weird, bro. You're weird. Sin is weird. Folks, sin is weird. You know, let's be honest. Sin is not, there's nothing normal about sin. The world makes weirdness normal. It's now it's normal to be half girl, half guy, half zebra, half half leprechaun. And the world says, hey, this is normal. But it, but if you want a relationship between male and female, the world's like, oh, man, you're strange, man. You're strange. It's crazy. The devil does this reverse psychology on you. The devil is playing with your mind. The devil says, hey, it's weird to be a Christian in 2024. It's weird to just want one husband and one wife. That's weird. The cool thing is to have like three husbands and three wives and stuff, sister wives. That, that's the normal now. And it's like, this is crazy. This, the devil plays with people's minds. And if you don't know the word of God, you're going to be deceived. You're going to be deceived and thinking, hey, this stuff is normal because the world says so. Because TV shows said so. Because the social media says this is normal, so it must be normal now, right? It's, it must be normal to sit around with 50 guys, you know, in one year. That must be the normal thing now for girls. And it's like, it's not normal in the eyes of God. God's like, this isn't okay. God's like, no, no, no. We, I did not make you for this. This is not why you were created. You were not made to be used, you know, as, as I like this. You, you were made to be loved and honored, you know, in the eyes of God. But the world won't tell you that. The world will never tell you. The world says, hey, man, you're just a whore. You're this and that. Just do your, do your thing, girl. Get your money. And and these girls are miserable. A lot of these girls who live this lifestyle are actually miserable. You know, they can't get a husband. They, they, they hate their life. They always do drugs. I mean, look at I'm telling you, folks, these strippers and these strip clubs, they hate their job. I'm telling you, they, they hate men. They hate men. They just do it just for the money. It's sad that people are trapped in money. See, money can be a trap to a lot of people because all you folks you have this high lifestyle of sin because of the money. You don't want to do this stuff. You don't want to sell drugs. You don't want to. You don't want to sleep around. You don't want to sell your body. But you got you got it so high up now you feel like I can't stop. You're like, oh, I can't stop now. I got car payments. I got house note. I don't even like my job. But you know, life is so expensive, and, and now the devil has you trapped. And now you're trapped in this lifestyle of filthiness because you love the money. You were chasing the money and not chasing God. And there's many people, many women are in this lifestyle, folks. Even some showgirls don't even like their job. But, they, but you know, they're like, hey, man, rent's expensive, man. It's so sad that, you know, when we don't have trust in God, we start doing things to, to, to make ends meet. But when we trust in God, God will provide. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's the Lord who provides. You know what I'm saying? There's never a reason to sin. Because when you start honoring God, God will take care of you. Hallelujah. The Bible says God feeds the sparrows. The Bible says God takes care of the birds, and he, how much will he take care of you? You know, you're more valuable than a bird. God feeds the birds, he'll feed you. I promise you God will take care of you, but you have to trust in him too. 
You have to trust in God to take care of you. And stop saying, I have, to, I have to do this myself. I have to sell drugs. I have to sell my body. No, you don't. You have to trust in God. That's what you need to do. You need to trust in God. And stop trying to run away from God, do things yourself, and live in sin. And cause others to sin too. Because it has consequences. Sin has consequences. And it's affecting your soul, whether you believe it or not. This lifestyle of sin affects everything about you. Your heart, your soul, your mind. And many people can't sleep at night. Many, many people don't even love themselves because they think that, hey, this lifestyle of sin is worth it because I look good on the outside. You know, people give me kudos and my girlfriends say I'm so this and that. But on the inside, they feel miserable. And no one is, and they can't go to anyone. They can't go to anyone. I see it as a minister of the gospel. People reach out to me for help. They can't even go to their own family and friends because they're lost too. It's so sad that you can't even go to your own friends because your friends are just as bad as you are. Your family is just as bad as you are. But I mean, thank God, though, God has ministers that care, but this is wrong with the world. The world is in, in sin. The world's in chaos. And people don't know who to go to. And I'll tell you, you need to go to Christ. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. You know, don't go to a therapist now. You need to go to God. Go to the person who created you. You know, God's the ultimate therapist. He's the ultimate. He knows what's really wrong with you. Because a therapist will try to give you like oh, some, some pills or something, but pills are not going to help you in this spiritual walk. Pills are not going to help you. What you need, people, what you need is God. It sounds very simple, but it's the solution to the whole world. I promise you, it's Jesus. Jesus Christ, more specifically, is the solution to the world. You know, not just any God, not no Allah or Buddha, but the, the real God of the universe, Jesus Christ, who came down and died for the sins of the world. He's the solution to the world's problems because Jesus teaches Jesus commandments are meant for a reason Jesus Jesus gives us morality folks science doesn't give you morality science doesn't say love your neighbor I mean that's not what science is for science is not for that but God gives you a standard of morality say hey you should love your neighbor because I said so and that's why we that's why we love because God says so not because to be a good person no we love because God commands us to love and if we don't love we're breaking God's commandments and now we're under judgment because what God says goes, folks. God has a hard standard of love. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says if you don't love your neighbor, you know, you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And God says if you, don't, if you don't love God, you know, if you don't love God, folks, you know, it, it's really bad. It's really bad. The Bible says if you have hate in your heart, you are a murderer. In the eyes of God, if you have hate in your heart, you are a murderer in the eyes of God. And no murderer has eternal life. So that's how God has a strict standard of love.